Hey guys, and welcome back to our fifth installment of the Animal Artist Collective. Today, I am going to be showing you this watercolor piece and talk to you a little bit about animal totems, spirit animals, and animal symbols in general. But first, I wanted to go over just a few kind of housekeeping things and announcements about what has been going on for this month in the Animal Artist Collective group. First off, I wanted to give a huge thanks to Anita for being one of our very first artists when we were starting this group. Uh, we have had such amazing support from Anita and I have loved seeing her illustrations as a part of this group. Unfortunately, she has had to take a step back uh, due to other things going on in life and her art career and unfortunately will have to be stepping down from the group for the time being. One of our other original members, Eve Bolt, will also be taking a little bit of a break from the Artist Collective this month, but will be returning for future videos. I think she may even have something coming out to tide you guys over in between our uploads this month and in November, so be on the lookout for that. In other news, we have a new guest joining us this month, and that is Mel from the channel Visual Mind. Now, she has already unofficially participated twice in the last few months, so make sure to go check out those as well when you're visiting her channel. Mel does a variety of different art videos, as well as videos about photography, which is a really awesome and unique voice to have in our group this month. One last announcement announcement about the group is that if you will check out the description down below, I will have a link to everybody who is participating this month, as well as a link to our Facebook page where we have polls going live when our videos go up for you to participate and help vote on the next biome for our next video. So this would be for our November videos and we are excited to see what biome you guys are interested in having us cover. Okay, so now that all of that is out of the way, I figured I would quickly mention the supplies I'm using and then jump right into my topic, which is about spirit animals or totem animals. As always, I have all the links to the supplies I'm using down in the description, and those are Amazon affiliate links. So if you choose to buy this or click through to other products to get as a treat for yourself, know that you will also be helping out this channel and this community. So I am using 100% cotton watercolor paper from B Paper Company, and I'm using a couple different watercolor brushes. Those will be linked down below, of course, and my custom-built Schmincke Horodam watercolor set. So today's topic is one I am really excited for and has been something that I've wanted to chat about more here on my channel especially since I studied this a little bit in my master's program for psychology, where we discussed and looked at symbolic meaning, especially within art therapy. Specifically, having animal totems or spirit animals can be something that is very personal, and there are a ton of different cultures that are tied to this sort of practice with identifying with some sort of animal counterpart. In today's video, I'm going over just the very tip of the iceberg for this subject, and I'm going to be reading specifically from the book Totems, the Transformative Power of Your Personal Animal Totem by Brad Steger. And I will be explaining a little bit of my own personal connection with animals. And specifically for this piece, I will be talking about the spirit animal that I associate most with my mother, who I associate with a deer or kind of elk figure. I honestly could have picked what I identify as at least one of my spirit animals, which is the fox, because we are 
covering the temperate forests and both deer and fox live together in these kind of climates. But I have done a lot of foxes here on my channel and I really wanted to dedicate something to someone that was very close to me, my mother, and why I came to the conclusion of sort of associating her with a deer-like animal. Reading a quick definition from the back of this book that I've just mentioned, among traditional Native Americans and other tribal peoples, totems are the enduring animal symbols that allow these peoples to explore the mysteries of life and the spirit world. From the graceful antelope to the aggressive cougar to the wise and peaceful turtle, each animal embodies certain strengths and attributes that the spiritual seeker can embrace and follow on a path of self-exploration. Now, totems offer each of us the tools we need to tap into the powerful of sacred animal totems by finding our own personal symbol and experiencing its energy firsthand. Now, I don't know about you, but I have always felt a connection to nature, which is pretty apparent in the work that I do. And I have definitely felt a super strong connection to animals. And it wasn't until I was in my master's program and even in therapy myself that I even started to consider what these connections might mean. Now, you can sort of take it for what it is. I feel like spirit animals and these sort of symbols in our lives are really up to the individual interpretations. So you're gonna get whatever you want out of having a spirit animal. And some may disagree or agree with that, and that is perfectly fine. Everyone's opinion is welcome down below as long as it is coming from a positive place. But I am curious if there are any animals that you feel specifically tied to. This might be something that you haven't really thought about, but I can now kind of look back on my life and find actually quite a few different animals that I've connected to, whether it's been a symbol that I specifically feel a connection to on a level of my own identity or other spiritual animals that have sort of come alongside me to help kind of guide me through particular times in my life. I can actually think of quite a few that I didn't necessarily know at the time, even through childhood, and now find strength in thinking about these animals as sort of protectors in my life. Like I mentioned, I do associate the deer, like I am painting here, with my mother, and that is not because we had a conversation about this uh, before she unfortunately passed away when I was younger, and this was something that she specifically connected with, but it was an animal that I kept seeing pop up quite literally in my life in various times of change and specifically kind of stressful times and I felt great comfort in seeing this animal in various places. One of the most distinct memories I remember in regard to her being present with me in life through the deer is when I first moved from where I grew up in Southern California up to the Bay Area where I live now to start my master's program where I really didn't know anyone when I first moved and and had to sort of start over uh, and had never moved in the entirety of my life. When I went to interview at the school that I eventually got into and graduated from, I realized that the entire campus was greatly inhabited by a lot of different deer. And it was such a cool experience to sort of drive through the campus and just see these deer grazing just about anywhere, all over, and I slowly started to realize that I was finding comfort in seeing them and they reminded me of my mother. And so that's the really big reason why I connect that to my mom. And I think it's less about what she would have necessarily identified herself as, as long as I'm finding comfort in it, that is a sort of spiritual connection I have to her. And even now in the neighborhood I currently live in, we actually have quite a few deer uh, throughout the seasons living really close by my house, even though we are not 
all that far away from the sort of major cities, we still have quite a few deer and other animals that live kind of alongside us. And I think that's such an interesting thing that we have all of these deer that have sort of followed me through my life, mostly in adulthood. Now, you might be wondering, okay, I'm interested in this, but how the heck do I figure out what animal is my spirit animal? And there's a few different ways to find an animal that you really connect with. And I wanted to kind of go through a few different ways you can find out what a spirit animal or totem animal for you might be. Like I mentioned, for me, I really identify with the fox currently, and that comes up in a lot of ways. And I also have a really strong connection to the octopus, and that's been a more recent thing. And I actually view that animal as more of a protector of me and something uh, more of an animal that I aspire to be rather than innately am. And I believe in my childhood, I actually had a pretty strong connection to the frog. I had a frog stuffed animal that was given to me when I was born and it was my favorite thing ever when I was very, very young. And I went through a lot of trauma as a child and I have found comfort in the frog symbol meaning a lot to me going through great change as a child. So. Those are some, probably not even all the animals that I can identify at least right now, but in the Totems book that I mentioned, uh, they give you a few different ways that you can find your totem animal. And one in particular is something that you feel like you've always kind of had a little bit of an obsession with. Maybe you've collected figurines of this animal, or you've just always known this is a favorite animal of yours. That could be a sign that that is your spirit animal. Something else that you might connect with is the zodiac birth sign, when you were born and what animal that correlates with. There's also the Native American zodiac. There's the Chinese zodiac. There's the animal totem that correlates with patron saints. And in general, if you just can sort of meditate on this and open your mind and heart up to receiving some sort of animal totem or a symbol in your life, I believe that through that meditation and research, you'll be able to find an animal that you connect with. Now, for me, totem animals are more of just a symbolic spiritual connection on a fairly light level of just having an animal to connect with and feeling that connection as being my connection with nature. I think often humans forget that they are themselves animals and a part of nature because we have basically all but completely divided ourselves from nature. And I think we not only can harm nature and our world because of that, but we also harm ourselves without really tapping back into that connection because I believe that there is this overall kind of more or less invisible connection that all nature has, whether that's plants or animals or just anything on the earth. I do believe that having connection to that can be really healing for us and is something that is really, really important to us being fulfilled and having a happier life. I actually only have a very limited view on this because we only touched on this a little bit in a class like I mentioned in my master's program, but I would love to explore this more and more and reread through some of my textbooks and share this more with you because I do have this connection with animals and would love to chat about this more at the very least through my Animal Artist Collective pieces, as well as in general bringing different themes of what different animals symbolize to the artwork that I am making. So real quick, I will sort of chat about uh, here at the end, the illustration that I have made. I wanted to make a sort of mother deer and a baby deer symbolizing myself and my mother and have the mother deer be 
a lot lighter, kind of ghost-like to some degree, and have the baby deer be a lot more colored in and vibrant, sort of symbolizing that she is more of a spirit at this point, but still is a motherly figure to me. And obviously set this just in a temperate forest, our biome, and show off just little details here and there. I didn't want this to be super heavily detailed as much. I just wanted to sort of focus on these two animals and have that sort of mother-daughter connection in the illustration. And here with the finishing details, I want to remind everybody that all of the original pieces of the participants in the Animal Artist Collective will be on sale, so make sure to check down the link down below and remember that 50% of the proceeds do go to a charity of our choice. I hope you enjoyed this topic and enjoy seeing everyone else's temperate forest animals. I am so excited to see everyone's finished videos. Make sure to click and check out everybody's channel. I also want to give a shout out to those that are unofficially participating. Make sure to check out their videos as well by searching hashtags as well as checking out the Animal Artist Collective Instagram. We love sharing those that are unofficially participating in our Instagram stories, so make sure to check those out. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe if you'd like to stick around, and share this video with a friend. If you have a particular animal that you feel connected with, make sure to leave it down below. I would love to see everyone's spirit animals. Maybe I'll even get a chance to draw it in the future if I haven't already. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, and as always, I hope you have a creatively fulfilled day, and I will see you next time. Bye guys! Thank you.